All right, good afternoon, YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about a new program that I have just made, and it is a novice power building program. So I've already made a like a true novice program um, that is available on the channel already, but this one, it starts out as a four day split, whereas the other one, it's a, it starts out as a three day split that transforms into a four day split where on some weeks you have two lower body days, on other weeks you have two upper body days. On weeks where you have two lower body days, you do like some GPP calisthenic type work to help build out your base and general physical preparedness. But in this program, it's actually going to be more so, all right, you know a decent amount about the compound movements. You have pretty decent form. You have kind of uh, not necessarily graduated, from a different program but have decided that you do want to kind of prioritize size strength whatever and you want to go from there so this program is meant to accommodate that this is a program that is hypertrophy focused so a lot of the decisions that have been made regarding the reason why things are set up the way that they are is because this is a program that prioritizes hypertrophy. So if ever there is a trade-off, it is because it is prioritizing hypertrophy, not just purely strength. Strength is a component because this is a power building program, meaning it does have the intention of actually getting you stronger. So let's get started. Day one. Day one starts out with as the bench press day. So you are going to be doing three sets of five. Very basic linear progression is going to be implemented into the main compound movements because this is a novice program and this is a novice um a novice friendly way of progression it's time tested it has been used across multiple different programs starting strength strong lifts mad cow um like grayskull lp like it is something that is tried and true and used by novices as a entry point into just general programming basics so we're starting out there as well as far as percentages go you are going to start out with 60 percent of your one rep max and your one rep max should be something that is like kind of uh, either you know it or you estimate it so what is your best top set performance put that into a one rep max calculator on the internet and you start with 60 percent of that weight you are going to add five pounds each time you come back to this session so that kind of like sets you up nicely over time now, with this split, one thing that I feel should be said is that for the most part, this is somewhat of a body part split. Now, you are going to be hitting the muscle in some capacity again in the week. However, it's not specific with actually doing another bench press variation. It's more so developing the muscle through other means. So, geez, my allergies are acting up, I guess, today. But anyway, you are trying to progress on the strength of your bench press on the bench press day, but this is also kind of your chest day. So the next exercise is going to be a bench press variation. I've included a drop down with variations that I recommend. So close grip bench press, incline dumbbell bench press, flat dumbbell bench press, machine chest press. I can definitely add in like other um, movements such as the inclined barbell bench press the feet up bench those are other two variations that i think are really good because they will put you at a disadvantage um which will target the chest a bit better and then or if you were to uh choose the close grip bench i find that the closer bench actually does give me a pretty good chest pump and but it also is a tricep focused movement so it helps you get more uh, pressing volume helps you get more volume in the chest and the triceps the shoulders as well but generally speaking it's mostly going toward the chest and triceps if you were to do something like a close grip bench but the other options are going to be more chest volume because like i said it is going to go through kind of like a like movement uh or yeah movement exercise based split however as far as like the muscles that accompany the movement it is akin to a body part split so, like I said, you're going to do a bench press variation, three sets of six to ten. Now, the progression here, there's two ways to kind of go about this. And the way that I will recommend it because it is a novice program is that you start with um, three sets of ten. Once you stall, go down to 
three sets of eight. And then when you stall, go down to three sets of six. Restart um, with three sets of 10 or change variations. So that's what I would recommend here. So for that movement, that's what you're going to do. After that, you're going to do lap pull downs with a supinated grip with tricep extensions for four sets of eight to 12. So I did want to include some type of pulling just to balance out the pushing. So you're going to be doing two, uh, six sets of um, pressing. However, I know it's not a one-to-one -one perfect ratio, but I think as far as volume goes, because you are going to be sticking to slightly higher reps, it somewhat balances out and you're going to be doing some type of pull, vertical or horizontal each day. So that's kind of where the balance comes in as far as pushing to pulling goes. Now with this, uh, the reason why I wanted to choose a supinated grip is just because it's a bit easier on the shoulders. It um, allows you to get a little bit more um, volume into the bicep, but it is going to be kind of shared among other muscles because like it's a lat pull down, it's mostly targeting your lats. So, or at least it should be. So that's why I'm going toward the supinated grip. Nothing wrong with a wide grip, but I just think for the purposes of this program, for the purposes of trying to hit your biceps, trying to get a bit more lat involvement, I do think the supinated grip is just a bit better. Then you're going to do a tricep extension. I'm not very specific here because there's a lot of things you can do. You can literally stand up from your lat pull down machine and just um, you know, change your grip and do lap, um, tricep press downs with that machine. You can turn around and do overhead tricep extensions with the same machine. You can bring over a barbell. Like if you have fixed dumbbells in your gym or fixed barbells in your gym, you can do an overhead tricep extension. You can, there's a lot of freedom there, but you are going to be doing some, the same thing, four sets, eight to 12. Then you're going to go into lateral raises and hammer curls. One thing I really want you to do here, oh, sorry uh just something popped up there okay so one thing i want you to do here is i want you to use an intensity technique oh shoot i want you to use an intensity technique um like myo reps or a drop set so the reason why you're only doing two sets of 12 to 20 is because you're going to be using some type of intensity technique or intensiveness technique i should um clarify so when you do your lateral raises, one thing you do is like, let's say you are doing lateral raises with 15 pounds, you do two sets of 12 to 20, and then you go down to 10 pounds. Then you go down to five pounds, just one after the other. Then when you do your hammer curls, you start out with, let's say 20 pounds, go down to 15, go down to 10. So do two drops and then you're good. Or you do something like mile reps. So let's say you're doing lateral raises and hammer curls, you're going to absolute failure. Let's say you hit failure at 12 reps with the weight that you're using. So what you can do is take, usually my um, protocol with this is like take two to three deep breaths just because that's a fair enough amount of time. And then you try to do half the amount of reps that you hit. So let's say you hit 12, you do six reps, two to three breaths, six reps, two to three breaths, six reps. Repeat that until you can't hit six reps. So that's it for the bench press day. So you are doing six, uh, six sets of chest, then your tricep gets some work, you get some bicep um, work in there, some, and because I do recommend hammer curls, the reason why I like doing, uh, or the reason why I advocate doing curls when you are uh, doing a bench press workout is just to help protect the elbow joint. Uh, this is something I got from my coach. And generally speaking, I knew that bicep work did have a restorative or a preventative uh, effect as far as like overuse injuries go. But I do think that generally speaking, I kind of went um, a little bit too light on that for my own personal training. So I'm trying to correct that now. And that's why I really recommend that you do a high volume of curls in your program. Then you go into deadlift day. So you can reorder the days. Just make sure that you have a you know lower, upper, lower, upper and then or upper lower upper lower so as long as like it kind of maintains that kind of template the actual days themselves can be moved around but you're going to go to a top set of a five rep max so you are trying to go to technical failure at this point and when i say technical failure i mean if your form breaks down stop the set ideally you want to go to a weight where it's challenging enough for you to just maintain your form and then generally speaking i feel like novices are actually can actually do a good job at judging this um, with my own novices that I have trained. Generally speaking, 
especially because I'm just asking them along the way and like I will make the recommendation of okay your form I feel like uh, if we were to add weight your form would break down and then I kind of get their opinion and or I try to ask them first and then let them know so that way it's kind of like a learning experience regardless if your form falters the the set is done like stop the set generally speaking you kind of want to go to a weight where you think to yourself okay if i do if i do add any more weight i'm not going to hit five clean reps that's when you know it's time to stop and then you move into three sets of three reps using 80 percent of whatever you hit so let's say you hit 225 you do 80 percent of 225 for three sets of three and then you all do a last set AMRAP on that last set. That's why there's a plus right here, which is something I need to include right here. So when generally speaking, when you look at programs and it says like a plus set, generally speaking, that means like three sets of five plus doesn't mean you're doing three AMRAP sets for all three. It usually means um, two sets of five. Then on your last set of five, you do a AMRAP set. So some will have it written like two sets of five and then comma one set of five but generally speaking it just kind of depends on the program but be, please read the entire program <laughs> next you go into the barbell row or the penlay row so this must be light i know i put four sets of six to eight the reason why i put four sets of six to eight is not to encourage the usage of heavy weights it's more so to encourage the quality of technique if you kind of go to a high rep set, obviously you're going to use a light weight, but at the same time, you are going to use a weight that will still fatigue you by the 8th, 12th, 10th rep, and then your form will break down. Whereas with this one, I want you to use a light weight. I want you to use a weight that you can manage, handle, and perform really high quality reps with, and you only add weight when you can do four sets of four to eight. I mean, uh, when you can do four sets of eight. So after that, you do machine squat or goblet squat. And here I want you to do a intensity technique such as a drop set or Meyer reps as well. And then you're going to be doing ham, uh, hamstring curls, same thing, drop sets, Meyer reps. The reason why you do two sets is because of that reason. And then bicep curls, two sets of six to eight. So here I do want you to use heavy weight. That's why I have you biasing towards choosing a barbell curl variation. Barbell, easy bar, doesn't really matter. Just do a variation of a curl that you can overload. Preacher curl, doesn't really matter. Then leg raises because you want to do get some ab work. Leg raises um, decompress the spine, so hanging leg raises especially. But because it's a bodyweight movement, you're just doing an AMRAP on that. Next, we have the overhead press day or the shoulder day. So the overhead press, the way that I kind of have the muscles chosen, uh, I should have explained this earlier, is since it's a bench press day, what muscles are used in the bench press? Chest, shoulders, triceps. So you have chest, you have some shoulders and of course triceps and then we have some things just to balance it out you know keep your joints healthy and then uh, improve the longevity of your training and go from there deadlift what gets worked your entire posterior chain your back your low back um dead, like quads play a role in the deadlift and then of course your hamstrings so developing your posterior chain is very important so that's why we have this selection of muscle groups there now for the overhead press very similar thing what is used in the overhead press? The shoulders, the triceps, and the upper head of the pec. So that's why pecs have a place in this um, program or this day. For the overhead press, you're going to be trying to get more volume on this movement. So you are doing three sets of six to 10 reps. The progression is as follows. Three sets of 10, you keep adding weight until you can't. Once you stall, you go down to three sets of eight. You try to add weight for as long as you can until you stall again. Then you do three sets of six, add weight until you cannot and then you go back to three sets of 10 generally speaking by this point because you're stronger what you might have used as a weight during your three sets of eight phase might now be your three sets of 10 so at least that should be the goal next we have a superset of pull-ups and dips with a drop set of push-ups so one thing i always recommend to my novices is that you stop the pull-up set when rep speed slows down so if you have to grind out a rep the set is over I just want to do this just so that way you can practice good clean form because the more you strain generally speaking the more you're going to cheat the rep and that's something i just want to prevent because generally speaking this is something that you can kind of combine with let's say greasing the groove at home with pull-ups and that's a great movement to do that with and then you'll be fine and then here you perform parallel bar dips followed by push-ups if you can't do dips just do the push-ups but because it's body weight three sets as many reps as possible then you're going to do a giant set with the upright row, tricep extension, and bicep curl. 
because you are trying to do this with as few pieces of equipment as possible, you can do this with, let's say, some dumbbells, um, cables, and go from there. And because, like I said, it's two sets, every time, anytime you do two sets, because it's fairly low volume, I would do an intensification technique such as minor ups or drop sets after that last second set. So then chest flies and reverse flies, use the pec deck or a like if you have like cables, you know, that's a great place to do that as well. Same thing, use an intensification technique such as my reps or drop sets. I would alternate, I would try not to do like just all my reps and all drop sets. I would try to like mix it up between the two and find what, what you kind of prefer for each one. Then we have the squat. So here we have the barbell squat doing the same thing that you're doing for the bench press. Just three sets of five, doing an AMRAP on the last set, starting out with 60% of your one rep max and going from there. Then you're going to do leg press or machine squat just to get a little bit more volume into the quads. And then you're gonna superset that with calves. Then here I want you to do a light, and this is very, very important, a light deadlift variation. So the drop down here, or I guess pop up, is recommending block pulls, barbell Romanian deadlifts, stiff leg deadlift, and the dumbbell Romanian deadlift. There are other, there's other movements I can fit in here, such as a trap bar, but it's just something where you can get practice with a hinge movement without putting on a lot of fatigue on your body. Now, since you are a novice, like, and your fitness just really isn't there, you might experience some soreness for the first couple weeks, but that should go away. I find that once you, if you start, let's say the easiest version of this, which is, you know, starting out with dumbbell Romanian deadlifts, then going into the bar, then maybe the stiff legged deadlift or a block pull that generally speaking, you be during that time, you built up enough fitness to um, go into, let's say the stiff leg or the barbell Romanian deadlift. Then you're going to do a row variation or shrug. So generally speaking, you want to kind of like match movements as best as you can. So let's say you do a dumbbell Romanian deadlift. Here you should do a dumbbell row or dumbbell shrug. Let's say you do the stiff leg deadlift. I would actually prefer you to not superset them or if you can superset them, superset like let's say the seated cable row with the stiff leg deadlift. Just because the seated cable or the stiff leg deadlift still has a strong low back component to it, so you want to have a row variation or a shrug variation that is kind of sparing on the low back, so those are my recommendations there. After that you do leg extensions and bicep curls. You can do them separately, superset them if possible, just kind of depends. But here, because last time I had you do by, um, barbell curls, I had you do it with more intensity. I want you to do them this time with a barbell curl, but more for more volume. And of course, leg extensions just to hit something, just to hit a, I think it's uh, a specific head of the um, quads that just doesn't really get hit by the compound movements. So since this is a hypertrophy focused program, I would decided to throw that in because if your goal is to maximize the size of your leg, yeah, leg extensions deserve a place in your program. So that is it. If you have any questions, that is just a very basic overview and um, explanation about the program. I'm going to probably make some edits when I put this up on my website, but it will be also available in the description down below. So if you have any questions, please let me know. If you run this program and you notice uh, and you have some feedback for like when you like, you know, at a, at a week in, three weeks in, and let's say six, eight, or 12 weeks in, I would very much appreciate that. I'm going to also use this with some of my pro um, clients as a base and then go from there. But um, if you run decide to run this program, I would very much appreciate any feedback. So that way we can refine it over time to kind of uh, round it out and um, get it done through there. So I really appreciate your support watching my channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.